Russian bloggers have decided to help their troops and start collecting donations for them. In the occupied territories of the Donetsk region, there is a real shortage of this. Bloggers know what is really needed for the Russian army, and that is, of course, black bags for dead bodies. Obviously, the so-called Russian influencers understood that collecting, for example, drones for the occupiers makes no sense, so they switched to the main thing – bags, in which participants will be able to return home on their own. But this is not the only problem of the occupiers, because they even have nothing to eat. And she also asked to send some food, but only in sealed cans, just in case someone might poison it. Smart thinking indeed. Well done. Well, by the way, watch this video till the end, where there will be my favorite section of the best trash advice from Russian leaders. Moving on. Such a mental defeat, as in the Kharkiv region, has never occurred in the Russian Federation. The chief of the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Kirillo Budanov, in an interview with Dmitro Komarov for the documentary Project Year, Kharkiv region, shared details of the deoccupation of the Kharkiv region and the last year's victorious offensive. To establish control over cities and populated areas, the Russian National Guard was involved. This is standard tactic for the Russians. They did this on all fronts. A unit of the armed forces followed immediately or concurrently by units of the National Guard, said the head of intelligence. Budanov emphasized that an indispensable component of the enemy's presence was propaganda aimed at distorting reality. Distorting reality usually starts with the artificial alteration of history. According to the intelligence officer, the rapid and unexpected breakthrough of Ukrainian troops in the Kharkiv region last year, which allowed almost the entire territory of the region to be cleared of the enemy, surprised even the most fanatical and senseless agitators of the Kremlin. The Russians were absolutely unprepared for this. If we recall media activity, even such blatant propagandists as Simonyan Solovyov then fell silent and gradually spoke. What is happening? We are losing? We are being defeated? They were bewildered. The question arose in society how it can be to defeat Russia. Such a mental defeat, as in the Kharkiv region, they have never had anywhere. I guarantee you that in Russian history this page will not even be mentioned, said Budanov. Guys, you watch the full uh, interview with English subtitles on the channel of the Ukrainian journalist Dmitro Komarov. The link I will leave under my video. And guys, please don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you want to support the channel and help us grow, you can do so through my Patreon or buy me a coffee, which I have shared in the description below. Through intensive attacks by the defense forces of Ukraine in the Black Sea, the occupiers have to disperse their ships and submarines. This was stated by Army General, former head of the Foreign Intelligence Service, Mykola Malomush, in a comment to the Ukrainian Channel 24. The expert believes that the Russian fleet cannot move freely in the waters of the Black Sea as it regularly becomes a target of attacks by the armed forces of Ukraine, Ukrainian special services and special operation forces. In this regard, Malamush believes that the Black Sea fleet of the Russian Federation no longer has a powerful dominance in the Black Sea.
the occupiers decided to disperse their ships and submarines, but we are tracking it. We control what is happening in the Black Sea, and we know what is under Kerch, Feodosia, what is in Novorossiysk, and when it all comes out. He added that Ukraine has means that can reach the ships of the Black Sea Fleet and other military facilities in Crimea. He was referring to long-range missiles lined with storm shadow as well as surface drones. We have created such conditions for the Black Sea Fleet, there will be no comfort for them. We will destroy the Black Sea Fleet all over the sea. According to publications Focus UA, since the beginning of the full-scale invasion of Russia into Ukraine, the Russian Black Sea Fleet consisted of 58 combat ships, taking into account patrol boats 74. In 19 months of the war, the Ukrainian defense forces damaged or destroyed about 14 vessels. Among them are large landing ships Saratov, Novocherkask, Orsk, Caesar Kunikov, flagship missile cruiser Moskva, one of the significant victories for Ukraine, Russian tank Vasily Beak with anti-aircraft missile system Tor, Frigate Admiral Makarov, minesweeper Ivan Golubets, landing ship Minsk, diesel electric submarine Rostov on Don, two petrol ships of Project 22160 type Vasily Bykov, and Russian missile ship Samu. So I hope there will be more Russian ships that will go where the notorious Moskva has gone. And after the deoccupation of Crimea, divers will be able to explore new attractions of the bottom of the Black Sea. To strengthen defense during the cold period, Ukraine rents air defense systems from allies. This was reported by the spokesperson of the Ukrainian Air Force, Yuri Ignat. Of course, every country first and foremost takes care of its own defense. No one will give us their air defense. Why are air defense being delivered so slowly and in dose? Because there isn't enough of it in the world to give to us, he said. Ignat noted that the number of air defense systems is important, especially during the heating season. It's not just about the installations, but also about ammunition and missiles. According to him, positive decisions were made at the meeting of the defense ministers in the Rammstein format on October 11th. However, which countries have provided or will provide Ukraine with air defense on rent is not disclosed. Regarding Russia's strikes, our cold season has already begun and heating is being slowly turned on. It's possible that the Russian Federation took a break from air strikes against Ukraine to accumulate a certain numbers of missiles. The invaders understand that striking with only Shahid Kamikaze drones is not effective enough, as air defense forces effectively shoot them down and also receive and will continue to receive anti-UAV means. As a reminder, the day before, British intelligence suggested that Russian Air Force's long-range aircraft had not struck Ukraine since September 21st for 21 days. Analysts believe that Russia wants to preserve the existing stock of Ha-101 missiles and also accumulate them for attacks on Ukraine during the winter period. The Air Force spokesman reminded that last heating season the invaders used missiles in combinations with Shahid drones. These were air and sea-based missiles and other types, including Hart-22. The Ukrainian spokesperson said that occupiers will continue to use Shahid types of drones. However, Ukraine is already receiving and will continue to receive 
means against kamikaze drones. By the way, let me remind you about HA-22 missiles. These missiles, carried by the long-range 222M3 bombers, are Soviet supersonic air-launched anti-ship cruise missiles. They were designed to hit radar contrast point aircraft carriers and group targets carrier strike groups with a special nuclear or fragmentation cumulative warheads. During the Ukrainian-Russian war, the H-22 missiles became the weapon of numerous crimes committed by Russia, including missile strikes on a shopping center in Kremenchuk on a residential building in Serhivka, a residential building in Dnipro, and others. The warhead of the missile weighed 950 kilograms with a deviation from the target of 600 meter and higher. Probably only the Patriot and some T anti-aircraft missile systems can shoot down the H-22, and we don't have them as many as we would like. The Russian Ministry of Defense claimed that on the night of October 15, allegedly 27 Ukrainian drones attacked the Kursk and Belgorod regions of the Russian Federation. Tonight, an attempt by the Kiev regime to carry out a terrorist attack with a UAV of the aircraft type on object in the territory of the Russian Federation was stopped. The Russian department reported that their air defense allegedly intercepted 27 drones. In particular, the Russian Ministry of Defense stated that 18 of them were over the Kursk region and two over the Belgorod region were destroyed. Where the remaining seven were shot down is not reported or the Russian ministry is uh, just very bad in mess. And in conclusion, my favorite section, the best absurd advice from Russian leaders. In Russian, State Duma deputy Anna Kuznetsova in the middle of the war against Ukraine stated that Russian women should have children from 19 years old. Thus, Kuznetsova said that the first children should be born to Russian women when they are 19-20 years old. A big, strong family starts with a young family. This is proven by statistical data. The first children should be born when the mother is about 20 years old. Then, according to statistics, their family can have three, four or more children. This is exactly the image of the future that the president spoke about, she said. Of course, she is absolutely right. In this way, each woman can produce three, four soldiers for the Russian rake. And then so-called influencers will be asking to send uh, black body bags because they are running out. Uh, by the way, earlier this year, Vladimir Putin ordered the government to come up with a method to increase the birth rate in Russia. And later, a Russian priest, Father Mikhail Vasilyev of the Church of the Great Martyr Barbara, said that if women gave birth to more children, it would be easier for them to send their children to war against Ukraine. Every lady, by nature's design, is generally endowed with the ability to give birth to many children if she does not use methods of terminating a pregnancy, then she will not have just one child. This means it won't be as painful, as scary for her to part with him, the cleric cynically remarked. Right. Why would you be scared and sad if you get um, Lada then and a fur coat or a basket of woods or some other stuff? Yeah, anyway, uh, that's it for today. See you in my next videos and Slava Ukraini!